An advisor to the Polish president has come under fire for what some are calling anti-Israeli comments. He was defending a new law that prohibits Polish people from being held responsible for the crimes of the Nazi regime against the Jews. Anti-Polish sentiment in Israel comes from the feeling of shame at the passivity of the Jews during the Holocaust. The new law also makes it illegal to refer to Nazi death camps situated in the country as Polish ones. Those violating the law could face severe punishment of up to three years in jail. And the Polish president's advisor went even further, defending the legislation. The religion of the Holocaust has become a symbolic shield for that country, which is used by Israel to create for itself a special position in many places in the world a shield which is meant to protect Israel against any criticism. Many Jews engaged in denunciation, collaboration during the war. I think Israel has still not worked it through. More than three million Jewish people lived in Poland before the Second World War. Most of them were killed during the conflict. The Auschwitz-Birkenau camp, which was built in Poland during the Nazi occupation, witnessed around the deaths of one million Jews. To discuss this more in some detail, I'm joined by Mark Schulman. Mark is, among other things, a columnist for Newsweek magazine. Mark, hello to you. What do you make of the comments by the Polish president's advisor, first of all? Well, <clears throat> very problematic, to say the least. I mean, you talk about uh, Jews being too pacific. I mean, what was, the, what was the Warsaw uprising, the ghetto uprising that the Jews took part, part in or organized in 1943? I mean, look, what came out after this law was a, a whole wave of anti-Semitism in Poland that we haven't seen for many years, since 1946. And the law has sort of unleashed the Poles to sort of feel free to do it. Now, the problem with the law is not so much the fact that it says you can't say Polish death camps, but the fact that the law says you cannot diminish the role of the Nazis, which means that if you say that the Poles had some part of it, you're violating the law. And by all accounts, while the Nazis were the ones who were 90% responsible for the Holocaust and what happened in Poland, clearly there were Poles who were involved and clearly mm. there were cases where the Poles were part of the, part of the problem. And so it's a real problem. And of course, it's a question of freedom of speech as well. Freedom of people to study the Holocaust, to talk about the Holocaust, and not to mention the fact that thousands and thousands of Israelis go every year to visit, many of them high schoolers. And the question is when their guides go to, Israel, go to Poland, excuse me, they, do they have to be afraid to speak the truth and speak of what went on mm. in Poland? Look, I had great uh, uh, uncles who made it through the Holocaust somehow, returned to their town in Poland, Frischdach, and were killed by the Poles when they came back in 1946. So clearly the Poles are not, uh, are not free of any sort of guilt. On the other hand, no, not the Poles are not the ones who were responsible. Clearly the Nazis were the ones who were 90% responsible. Okay. So you have to look at it from a whole picture. Do you think you we're going to see some repercussions for Poland, both for the law and the comments coming from its officials? Is there going to be a reaction to this? Well, there's certainly been reaction in Israel. There's been talk about stopping all of the visits by Israeli high schoolers to Poland. It brings in a great deal of tourist money, clearly. Uh, clearly, look, what's happened is the Polish government has moved so far to the right in the, last couple, in the last two years since the new government has taken hold that this has sort of been like a symbol. And I think this will have an effect on P Poles' relations with the Western Europe at this point. I mean, it's, it's part of a series of actions that the Polish government has taken. They're a member of the EU, and yet they're testing the EU and its ability to accept a much more nationalistic government in Poland. J just finally, um, and uh, and briefly, if you can, it comes with nationalism. Yeah, the, the the term passivity. What were, what was your reaction to that when you heard um, the the advisor to the president talking about the Jews' passivity? Look, clearly, you know, some of the images of the of the Holocaust until 1962 in the trial of Eichmann, there was this sort of feeling that the Jews were very passive and they were not they didn't do anything. When the trial of Eichmann came out, it became clear the Jews weren't passive. Yes, some were passive, but most of them were met with overwhelming force. Some fought back. They were Jewish partisans and they were Jewish fighters. And, and the idea of p passivity, you know, of course, it's the opposite of Israel. You know, here in Israel, the okay, whole idea of Zionism in Israel is the idea that we'll no longer be passive. Thank you very much for your time. This is our Mark Schulman, columnist for Newsweek magazine.